your past, your rules of what can or cannot be, may all be part of one long dream from which you are about to awaken and discover the world as it really is. chair and take a seat in my dark corner of this sick world. This week for a change of pace we're looking at something a bit more highbrow. A film which critic Mark Spainhauer called one of the most intellectually provocative films ever to come out of the depths of gore cinema. Sounds almost Bergman-esque. Or perhaps not. But unlike a lot of the films we've looked at, this one does at least live up to the promise of its title. The Wizard of Gore. I am Montag. This is Montag, wizard. And there's the goal. Whoa, tough audience to impress. OK, I had to watch this three times before I understood the point that this clumsy half assed attempt at editing was trying to make, and we don't have that sort of time. So, Montag has hypnotised the audience with his eyebrows, so that while he disembowels a volunteer, for reasons which will presumably become clear, they see something else. Afterwards, they remember a great trick, and the volunteer walks away unharmed. Until later, that is. It was a good show, and that's all. Audience members, Sherry and Jack, happen on What's the scene. What's that all about? Looks like someone got hurt. Press, press, let us through, please. Let press. me through, I'm a press. sports journalist. Officer, officer, let us through, please. Press. What happened? The, the hand of that dead person touched me. Icky. The following day, Sherry plugs Montag on her TV show. That I'm abandoning stage and screen today to bring you a much more exotic bit of entertainment Billed as Montag the Great. Magnificent, actually. I'm guessing it was your attention to detail that first drew you to a career in journalism. She tracks him down I for an interview. In? I don't give interviews. Wouldn't you like to have a seat? It's his dressing room. Perhaps you have been too hasty in your evaluation of my meager talents. No kidding. Of course, Sherry is unaware that, as well as killing the girls, Montag is also stealing their bodies under cover of a red camera filter and taking them off through a hole in the cemetery wall, for reasons which will presumably become clear later. That's the basic setup, and it certainly leaves some mysteries to be solved throughout the rest of the film. But there are also one or two hitches. Firstly, the effects. Not the best time to freeze frame, since you get a really good look at what is clearly a rubber head. And if you were in any doubt, there's his real head. And if you think that the effects lack something in the way of realism, just wait until you see Montag's acting. Which one of you will volunteer for this harmless stunt? Of course, that may be just his stage persona. Nevertheless, I feel very guilty. No, he's like that all the time. How very unfortunate. There's also some classic schoolboy errors. Blood on her left hand, moves to her right hand. And that dead girl is breathing quite heavily. But the biggest issue here is Montag's opening speech, which goes on. Awakening the dead is beyond the scope of my meager powers. And on... Torture and terror have always fascinated mankind. And on... What goes up... must come down. How about doing some magic? He might not look it, but this waiter is the most important character in the film. We're now 15 minutes in, and he is the first person other than Montag to say a single word. Table for how many, please? I've never been so relieved to see anyone in my life. He made the film for me. But enough nitpicking. Let's get down to some mystery solving. Perhaps whatever drove your... What? He's off again? This was dull enough the first time. 
have you ever had the fine luxury of observing the spectacle of human butchery in person? Yes, it was about five minutes ago. Did I say that I would drive a solid metal spike? into this woman's brain. I don't know, weren't you listening either? So, again, he kills a girl. Amazing, he's turned her to rubber. And, again, he steals the body. Hi, I just came in through the floor. That's the way he affects me too. And, again, uh, this dead girl is holding on. Nothing's changed since the last murder. There's been no plot development, nothing to follow. Greg, that's not possible. Although, having said that, Jack has started to notice that something is amiss. Well, that woman he saw in half, that's the same woman that they found cut in two in a restaurant later that night. So, perhaps now we can... Isn't there one lady... Oh, for the love of God! ...enough to satisfy your fellow human beings' lust for blood? You could get away with this if a little more of the plot was revealed every time, but without that, it's just repetitive tedium. I find it difficult suppressing my yawns. You find it difficult? So, again... And again... Montag at the laundrette. And again. It's like Groundhog Day with gore. And to make matters worse, it turns out that there are actors in this film less believable than Montag. <laughs> Meanwhile, our heroes, who live in this 50s hotel room, continue their exhaustive investigation. Here, listen to this. When they finally pick up, You saw a Montag show again tonight, didn't you? Yes, I bloody did. Yeah, what was his coup de grace tonight? This time he punched first a woman from head to foot. No, he didn't. Where a Mr. Kowicki was lying on the bedroom floor holding his wife's head. No, he wasn't. Yeah, the rest of her body was on the bed about five feet away. No, it wasn't. She looked like she'd been run over by a threshing machine. No, she didn't. For fuck's sake, was the last victim the continuity girl? Yeah, that's the woman. Finally, the police get involved. No one knows we made a connection between the show and the killings. All we have to do is attend tonight's performance. Keep the featured volunteer under surveillance after the show. If the uh, killer goes after her, we get him. And all we, we lose is a girl. Get... So perhaps now the story will... What could be safer than swallowing a sword? Oh, for fuck's Fine. sake, make it stop! No. Usually graphic episode of Thunderbirds. And inevitably, etc., etc. Montag is scheduled to perform on your show tomorrow, isn't he? Yes, he's supposed to do some sort of a fire trick. Well, today, I shall dispel any such skepticism. The police decide to use Montag's appearance on Sherry's show as a trap. Let us link our minds. But the wizard has Look a trap of his own. Deeply at me. Let your eyes fly like spears from a distance, breaking down the barriers between us. I'm sorry, sorry. Can what was that well-known old simile? Spears from a distance you'd see coming. Mind. It's spears from close range you've got to worry about. And even then, as a metaphor for hypnotism, it would still be bollocks. Though the hypnosis thing does seem to have the desired effect. Wow, this show has a huge audience. Ah, the only man in the world who looked Our away at that bleeding. precise moment. Greg, 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 look at your hand. Greg, Greg, it's Montag, he's doing it, Montag. Let us now join hands and prepare for our journey. We're now approaching the climax, the and I must admit that, despite myself, I am intrigued to know what Montag's been doing, and how, and why, and where he's been taking all the girls. So... <laughs> what? 
know it's all over now. He's dead? His power must have died with him. That leaves quite a lot up in the air. I'm sure glad everything is back to normal again. But there's so many unanswered questions. I'm glad someone else noticed. How could he hypnotize hands into bleeding? How could he have killed all of those women after his trip? What happened to all the stolen bodies? If he was planning to lead all of us into the fire, why did he die when you pushed him in? All good questions. So, so any answers? What happened? Jack, what? What? You fool. What makes you think you know what reality is? Huh? You're going to discover what the real world is! What the... <laughs> How dare you laugh! <laughs> Look into my eyes! What will I see there? The past. And the future. Well, this explains nothing! Do you think you're the only one who deals in illusion? You. You are my illusion. You are no longer even here. You have to start your little charade all over again. But I... I... I am Montag! I am Montag, master. Ah, the intellectual side reveals itself. This film is making a very shrewd point about the transitory nature of reality with its circular structure and repeating set pieces, and no! The circular structure is just a lazy-ass way to avoid having to write a proper conclusion, and the repeating set pieces are the easiest way to fulfil this film's only real goal, gore. If that's all you want your film to be about, Fine, although personally there's only so much pig intestine I want to see in a film. But don't dress it up in a bunch of pseudo-philosophical mumbo-jumbo and artistic crap. Weren't you even the least bit impressed? The only thing to admire in this film is the sheer balls of pointing out all the massive flaws in the plot and then doing sod all to fix them. And that in itself is nowhere near enough to excuse this level of nonsensical shite. In fact, there's only one thing that could possibly make this film any worse. Oh, don't you dare! The end. Definitely.